Hello, hello, hello. I put on a shirt just to film this video, so don't say I don't treat you nicely, <laughs> okay? Um, anyway, guess who's back? Back again. It's me. I haven't uploaded to the YouTube, to the YouTube. <laughs> I've forgotten what the platform is even called. I haven't uploaded to YouTube in a hot minute on either my main channel or my second channel, um, Jack in the Books. Today, I wanted to tell you about the five best books that I've read so far in 2021 because it's the fifth month of the year, and you know what? I know, I know that some of you are sitting there, <laughs> and I am gonna call you out. I know that some of you made that New Year's resolution in the end of 2020, saying, I'm gonna read more. In 2021, I'm gonna read. And have you? Have you done that? Well, if not, I got you covered because these are five cracking books. Like, these are absolute bangers, which I would highly, highly recommend. And I read for a living. Okay, I, both for YouTube stuff and also in my job in the publishing industry, I literally read for a living. So I feel somewhat um, qualified <laughs> to recommend these books to you. So hopefully you'll find a great new book that you can pick up. And actually you're in luck because I am actually hosting a giveaway over on my Instagram to win a copy of one of these books. So just go find this photo and comment which of these books you want and you can win. Anyway, more plugs than a bath shop up in here, huh? Um, anyway, the first book that I want to recommend to you is The Song of Achilles. This book, you've probably seen it everywhere, everyone is talking about it. It is a mythical retelling, um, so it's like a reimagination of Greek mythology and I feel like a lot of people are intimidated by it because mythology tends to be kind of elitist and confusing um, and something that you know, there's lots of technical words and names and characters who um, kind of boggle your brain a bit. Well, this is a great place to start because this book is really accessible. Um, it treats all of the, you know, mythical figures as characters in the book, which it, which it introduces from scratch as if you've never heard of them before. Um, so I think that people who have no interest in mythology or have never read any mythology or learned about any mythology will enjoy this book. Um, just as much as people who are absolutely obsessed with it. This is a love story, but also a story of battle and friendship and legacy, and I really, really thoroughly enjoyed it. It will rip your heart into tiny pieces, and so if that's what you're into, get your hands on a copy of this book. But I'm just warning you that like this bit here may get soaked with your tears because it's very, very sad. Next book is this one. This is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Originally, when I saw this being recommended a lot, I paid no attention to it just because I think there was something about the fact that it has the word husbands in the name or like seven husbands. I just assumed it was going to be a romance and I just had no interest in that really. However, although that is a tiny element of this book, there is so much more to it than just that. This is the story of Evelyn Hugo, who is a fictional Hollywood starlet. And basically she's kind of lived her whole life in the public eye, but there's also a lot that people don't know about her. And in her kind of later years, she's been incredibly private and she's hosting an auction, um, giving away some of her iconic gowns from um, some of the biggest nights in her career, and a kind of new to the scene journalist is chosen by Evelyn Hugo herself to write her biography. Yeah, that's what the blurb says, so that's not really a spoiler, that's just like the very first chunk. And then the rest of the story is Evelyn Hugo's vibrant, um, fascinating life, and it is exquisite to read, it is such a treat, and um, there's a twist, which I did not see coming at all, like my jaw genuinely dropped. I thought this was so well done, so well executed, and really heartwarming and such a page turner. So yeah, this is a big recommendation from me. The next book that I read for the first time this year and absolutely adored was Kafka on the Shore by Murakami. Haruki Murakami is a Japanese author. These are translated from Japanese. And Kafka on the Shore, where do we even begin? It's basically, um, so there's two kind of parallel narratives going on throughout the story. Um, one is of an old man who speaks to cats and the other story is of a 15 year old boy who runs away from home. And you know, maybe their paths might cross at some point, I, I couldn't possibly tell you. <laughs> um, but it's so enthralling and it feels like a daydream in the best possible way. It's magical, um, kind of magical realism, I suppose. Um, so even though there are kind of supernatural um, occurrences, they don't feel completely um, like fantasy, uh, and I really, really enjoyed this book. It is stunning as a piece of work, and Murakami is such a fantastic storyteller. So if you haven't read any of Murakami's work, I would recommend starting with this or Norwegian Wood, both Chef Kiss, Immaculate, thank you, 
Next. Oh man, this book is called The Vanishing Half. This is currently nominated for the Women's Prize for Fiction. Um, Britt Bennett is so talented. Like she has got more talent in her little finger than I have in my whole being. Again, this feels kind of um, redundant to say about, you know, famous writers, but what a storyteller. Like Britt Bennett absolutely nailed this. The kind of elevator pitch for this book is that it's about two sisters who are black but could pass for white. And it's actually inspired by another book called Passing, which sort of deals with similar themes. But this book is about these two sisters, one that chooses to pass for white, one does not. And then we kind of see the way that their lives go on from that moment and um, how they unfold and the events that impacts the rest of their lives. That's the elevator pitch, right? But there's so much more to it than that because we also see those women's children and um, there is amazing trans representation in this book and I just love it. I would kiss this book. In fact, I will. <laughs> okay, there was a line <laughs> and I crossed it, but this book is really, really fantastic and I would encourage everyone to read it because it's brilliant. And the final book I'm going to talk about is this one. This is Kim Jae-young, born 1982. This is a book about the endemic of misogyny in South Korea and the typical female experience in society. You know, even though it's based and rooted in South Korea, the experiences are universal for women. And so I think that this is such an important book to read, especially if you're a man. Um, and that's why I would heartily recommend this book because, um, well, Murakami <laughs> is not the best at representing women. He very much represents women from like a male perspective. Um, this is sublime in representing um, a real lived authentic female experience, I think. And so um, it's really important to read stuff like this. Cho Nam Jo tells this story of a woman sort of slowly losing the plot um, because of all the pressure and microaggressions that uh, she encounters throughout her days. And um, yeah. I would heartily recommend this as well, as with, you know, all of them, because, <laughs> well, that's the point of the video, huh? So those are my top five picks for 2021. If you're in a bit of a reading slump, or if you are struggling to get reading at the moment, then I would recommend all of these books as a real page turner, um, especially The Vanishing Half and The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and The Song of Achilles, if you want something to um, get you out of a reading slump. As I said before, I'm giving away a copy of each of these books over on my Instagram, as well as a copy of my own book, Jack Edwards, The Universe. Um, the best book of all time, really, I would say. I'm also giving away a copy of my own book because a few of you guys said that you would love to read it. So um, yeah, head over to my Instagram to win a copy of one of those. Feel free to subscribe to this channel if you like. I've got lots more um, second channel content planned and I wanna do more like spontaneous things just like this. So um, let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see, any other specific types of book recommendations maybe, because um, I feel like I haven't really done proper book recommendation videos for a while. So yeah, um, love you all loads. Have a wonderful evening and um, conversation closes on Thursday the 6th of May. So yeah, bye-bye.